poor agri agronomic practices is causing farmers at Tuba in the South municipality huge losses. Several of their crops have dried up due to inadequate moisture in the soil owing to the Hamilton season. Goal 2 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals promotes the eradication of hunger by 2030. This is to be done through encouraging good agricultural practices to increase yield. This is, however, being thwarted by the severe Hamilton weather. Both livestock and crops bear the brunt of the harsh Hamilton weather. For farmers at Tuba in the Greater Accra region, more than 168 hectares of crops have waited. Initially, we were thinking that this year we will not get I mean, severe hamatan like this. But later part of November, we realized that no, it's very severe. Had it not been the hamatan, like we will make money because crops or vegetables are expensive now in the market. Farmers are unable to salvage their crops because the irrigation canal is undergoing routine repair works. An extension officer, Joe Mabel, advocated good agronomic practices to reduce the impact of the harsh weather conditions on crops. We have encouraged them to increase the practice of mulching, mulching their crops, that is the vegetables and other crops. He is hopeful cultivation of improved seeds is a sure way to keep farmers in business. We always advise farmers to go to certified seed shops to purchase their seed to plant. That is where you can be sure that what you are planting, you get the best of returns. He also underscored measures that farmers must adopt to stand the season. At this time, naturally the weather is dry, but the rains wouldn't come now. We have to employ artificial means, that is through irrigation, to get the plants going. Joe Marble warned farmers to desist from storing harvested crops in barns to prevent them from being destroyed by bushfires. Although the Hamatan is subsiding in the southern sector of the country, the Ghana Meteorological Service has predicted this year's northeast monsoon season will end in March 2017. The service also predicted more water bodies may dry up while livestock farmers may lose their animals if appropriate measures are not devised to supply them water. Okay, in other business news this afternoon, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers wants fuel prices up not more than 4%. The Chamber is therefore asking consumers to boycott oil marketing companies increasing prices uh, above 9%. And uh, we'll be finding out more from um, the Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, uh, Duncan Amwa, who uh, will be joining us uh, briefly to tell us why he thinks that it should not go above 9% or it should not go above 4% actually. And uh, already there are hints that there will be increment in fuel prices as to what is causing uh, the reason for the increment we'll find out uh, shortly but then also why how is the calculation being done by COPEC for which reason they are saying that it should not go above four percent let's find that out from Duncan Amoa yes Martin uh, yes, um, good afternoon, good afternoon, and, good, afternoon and, good afternoon and thank you very much for joining us a happy new year to you uh, happy New Year to you and uh, your hard-working uh, staff at TV3. Right. Uh, we are told that fuel prices are expected to go up. Fair enough. But your outfit, COPEC, is saying that it should not go above 4%. Why so? Uh, let me quickly uh, do a few corrections. Indeed, the expectation was that it would have done uh, some more to 5% uh, maximum. Uh, unfortunately, a few other indexes have gone up uh, within the same period. One of the indexes are uh, being uh, emerging uh, for operators and dealers. And that clearly uh, has also affected how much we are all in uh, for fuel prices now. Uh, indeed, we would have expected that uh, at the BBC end, uh, it wouldn't have done more than 4 to 5 percent. But the throughput effect is that uh, we are seeing. Uh, some nine to uh, almost 12 percent increases around this time, and that is still not helping uh, all of us in the country. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our calculations would have uh, allowed some four to five percent increases, but the throughput effect uh, when you input some of these numbers uh, relative to the, 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 the 17.5 uh, 
special petroleum tax. Uh, that's exactly what uh, has happened now, and unfortunately, Ghanaians are being uh, forced to pay much more than uh, we should have paid. Just like you mentioned, in two weeks, it is likely prices will go up again, uh, unless and of course until uh, the incoming government uh, decides that it's a matter that it would uh, want to address and address immediately. The special petroleum tax uh, component alone uh, is leading all of us into a very bad ditch, and uh, it looks as though uh, deregulation is beginning uh, to serve all of us negatively. But deregulation is supposed to do the opposite, isn't it? Because then it would put extra pressure on the consumer. Yes, Martin. Uh, the, the, the craft of deregulation was to uh, take care of competition and force prices down. Unfortunately, uh, the reverse seems to be the, the case in our, 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 our country currently, uh, where uh, you only see uh, prices moving up uh, every day. If you recall just two weeks ago, Ghanaian saw some four to six percent increments. Prior to that, we have done uh, almost three to eleven percent increments. Today, up we see at a time when world market indexes. Uh, hovering around 55 to 56 dollars, Ghanaians are paying close to 19 Ghana to the, uh, for a gallon of oil. That indeed is worrying, and the only thing that can address these things uh, would have to do with repositioning of the taxes. Uh, actually, the federal petroleum tax, the 17.5 percent. If it is not repositioned immediately, if it is not even uh, reduced, uh, we will continue to have tax overruns where BDC will do about 3, 4, 5 percent. But before you put uh, on the price bill that you would arrive at some uh, higher, I mean, uh, uh, increases. All right. It is indeed worrying, and we think uh, the incoming government would have to uh, adjust immediately and look at some of these things. Because All right, my final, my, my final question... Right, my final question to you, Duncan, would be um, double-barreled, which is that, one, would you advise the current administration to consider um, subsidy in, uh, in reference to the issues of fuel? And then also, you're asking consumers not to accept um, the excessive increments between the 9 to 12 percentage points. How can the consumer say they are not going to do that because they really do need the fuel? Uh, Martin, yes, indeed, we do need the fuel. Uh, prices have gone up uh, quite drastically. It's not now going up. It's already gone up. Uh, most pumps are dispensing at much higher uh, values than we actually expected. Fortunately, uh, there are still a couple of stations uh, who haven't done uh, as much increases yet. And what that means is that uh, the consumer will still have a choice to choose between where prices are lower and where prices have gone much higher. But then again, like I have indicated, the incoming government has an honest job to ensure that some of the taxes uh, that is forcing fuel prices to escalate by the day, uh, some of them they do something about immediately. Other than that, like I have indicated, in two weeks from now, we are going to see further adjustments upwards, and it doesn't look too good for any of us. Okay. All right. And um, I said my last two questions, but um, the issue of the government considering the incoming government going to be under some pressure, do you think, what kind of impact do you think that is going to have on them? Because that will be like a week or two into their new administration. Yes, Martin, if you look at the transition process, uh, the incoming government uh, is actually working, if you, if you take it that way. Uh, we know that they have uh, the men. Uh, to execute a job. This is a present issue. It is not one of those issues uh, that will probably come as a campaign promise that will take a year or two to fulfill. It is one that affects the pocket of uh, the 27 million Ghanaians. And so one would expect that even by next week, if the incoming administration uh, believes that it is something that they need to arrest immediately, I believe Dr. Mahomia, I believe Nana Akupuado, uh, I believe the people that uh, they will put in the energy chain uh, uh, organization uh, mm. will set up immediately and arrest this uh, current trend. The city is free falling as we speak. Bank of Ghana would need to set up. If it doesn't, like I've indicated, we may see even much more increment uh, than we are seeing currently at 9 to 12 percent. It might be okay. worse uh, in two weeks. We do not think the government incoming would need to be served as such, uh, as some re a recipe as this. But right. we also know that it has absolute control 
far containing or controlling poor pricing is concerned. Okay. Okay. And we believe they will uh, in the next couple of days as soon as uh, they resume power. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Duncan Amoa, for your time. He's the executive director for the uh, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, and uh, the warning against uh, consumers to stay away from um, oil marketing companies and fueling stations that may be charging more than the uh, expected percentage that, ha uh, that has been announced. So we would see how it unfolds, especially with the incoming administration, what they make of this and how they intend to handle it. Uh, in the face of the fact that in two weeks there's a likelihood of another increment. That's it for business on the midday live.